dear colleagues, congenital hip dislocation is one of the most important and challenging topics in pediatric orthopedics. In my research, we would like to reevaluate the conventional treatment of hip dislocation in order to find the most personalized treatment protocol. My name is Jura Domos. I work as a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Samarvas University, and my vision is to ensure the highest quality treatment for our pediatric patients and also to build one of the best pediatric orthopedic centers in Europe in 10, 15 years. In, in order to achieve the same, we have to introduce the best available treatment methods in every field of pediatric orthopedics, and we also have to work out new treatment protocols. My current research fits well into this concept. In the first part, we are investigating the risk factors of failure in the treatment of congenital hip dislocation. Based on a systematic review and meta-analysis, we would like to define how we can reach the best results and avoid complications. In the second part, we are analyzing the data of our treatment protocol at Semmelweis University, which is different from the international protocol, but we seem to have better results with that. Because of the large number of publications and high amount of data, we divided the first project into three topics according to the different treatment steps. So now we, we have uh, four ongoing pr projects. So the first three projects are about the risk factors, factors of failure in the treatment of congenital hip dislocation. I started to write the first manuscript uh, in the topic of closed deduction in May, I, and I'm planning to finish it in June. And the target journal is the bone and joint journal with five impact factors. Uh, let's see how these three topics join each other. According to the international protocol, after a failed conservative treatment or in case of late diagnosis, a closed deduction of the dislocated femoral head is performed under general anesthesia. If the closed deduction fails, an open surgical reduction is needed. If the open reduction fails, two additional surgery is performed. But complications are quite common with this treatment protocol. Unsuccessful reduction and redislocation are the main reasons for failure. In addition, the most serious complication of the treatment, the avascular necrosis of the femoral head is quite common too. The overall rate of it is 10% in closed and 20% in open reduction. What we don't know is the overall rate of failure and the risk factors of failure. But if we could identify the cases where the conservative treatment will probably fail, we could skip the conservative step and perform a closed deduction immediately. Thereby, we could avoid several complications and unnecessary interventions. And if we could select the cases where the closed deduction is likely to fail, we could skip the closed deduction step and perform an open reduction immediately. And based on the scheme, we could perform a primary complex surgery if the open reduction will also probably fail. So our questions are, what are the risk factors and the overall rate of failure in the treatment of congenital hip dislocation? We are investigating three groups, children with conservative treatment, with closed deduction and open reduction. The intervention is the presence of risk factors and the comparison is the absence of risk factors. And the outcome is the rate of failure. Our hypothesis is that, the, that certain risk factors increase the rate of failure in the treatment of congenital hip dislocation. I performed a systematic search in October in three databases and I found more than 12,000 records and more than 200 eligible full texts were selected. These publications covered the three topics, the conservative treatment, the closed deduction, and the open reduction group. Regarding the risk factors, we found 78 publications, and we also found uh, more than 100 publications with only the data about the rate of failure. In the cl closed reduction group, we found five different types of failure. The primary failure rate was 13%. This group consists of two subgroups. The intraoperative failure is when the dislocated femoral head is not reducible in the operating room under general anesthesia, the rate of it is 25%. And the other group is the postoperative failure, when only the postoperative CT or MRI scan shows that the primary closed reduction attempt was not successful. But after a successful reduction, redislocation can also occur. The rate of it is 8% and the rate of overall failure was 20%. We investigated 61 risk factors and we found that the grade of dislocation significantly influences the risk of failure. 
Uh, in low dislocations, the, the failure rate was significantly lower, and in high dislocations, the, significant, uh, the rate of failure was significantly higher. And we found an, another important result, uh, the risk of failure was significantly higher in preoperatively cl clinically irreducible uh, dislocations compared to reducible dislocations. There are several strengths of our study. This is the first systematic review regarding the risk factors of failure, and this is the most comprehensive meta-analysis in the topic of hip dislocation treatment, and we also were able to identify high-risk high patient groups. But there are some limitations too. Publications do not consistently <laughs> investigate and define the different failure group groups, and the treatment protocols were not exactly the same in all institutions. So the con conclusion of, of our first study is that the risk of failure is high in close deduction in case of high dislocations and in preoperatively irreducible dislocations. So in these high risk patients, open, open reduction is advised in, instead of close deduction uh, to avoid complications and unnecessary interventions. But randomized clinical trials could, could clarify what other risk factors influence uh, the risk of failure in these patients. In the op op open reduction group, we found uh, less data. The postoperative failure rate and uh, the redislocation rate were similar to the closed reduction group, 4 and 7 percent, but the rate of overall failure was significantly lower than in the closed reduction group. Uh, during the uh, data extraction, we realized that we have to investigate the fourth topic of the hip dislocation treatment, the open reduction and osteotomic group to get the intraoperative failure rate. So during the full text selection, we found 143 uh, eligible full texts, which we are analyzing now. Uh, regarding the risk factors, we found uh, only a few risk factors in the open reduction group, and we didn't find any significant result. That's why we are planning to uh, investigate the open reduction group together with the open reduction and osteotomy group. In the conservative treatment group, the rate of failure uh, was for, uh, 11 percent, and we are still analyzing the re potential risk factors. Uh, our for fourth project is the uh, analysis of our results uh, uh, in, in congenital hip dislocation at our institute. And uh, at Samuelweiss University, we don't use the internship protocol of hip dislocation treatment after a failed conservative treatment or in case of late diagnosis because of the high rate of failure and avascular necrosis. Uh, during the treatment, we, we would like to avoid the forced reduction of the dislocated femoral head because it can damage the blood supply and can cause avascular necrosis. As we cannot select the cases where the conservative or the conventional treatment will probably fail, we could skip, uh, we skip the closed and open reduction steps and perform a primary complex surgery uh, with open reduction, shortening femoral osteotomy, and joint reconstruction. Although we perform more surgeries than the other centers, uh, practically we can minimize the rate of failure and avascular necrosis. And we are analyzing uh, the exact rate of complications and the results of our patients. So these are the four uh, main topics that we are investigating this year. After finishing the first publication in the topic of closed reduction in June, the next step is the open reduction and then the conservative treatment group. And after completing these three publications, uh, the last step is the analysis of our own patients. And I brought a quote from Istvan Sepsi, who is a famous and internationally recognized winemaker. His verse that the highest quality is our, our moral duty is uh, also a very important rule in medicine, especially when we treat children. Thank you for your attention. So one question. If I get it right, now we are aiming to do surgery right away when we see a patient with, uh, with a dysplasia. Is it true? So shall we ever try conservative treatment or closed reduction after your uh, review? Just uh, could you could you talk yes. a little bit louder? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. 
Is there any point or is there any reason why we should do or not do surgery in the future after your review? Is there any place for close the reduction after your review? What do you think? So thank you for your question. Um, yes, we, are, we, we have to analyze the data. So our protocol is the best, but uh, regarding the... Of course. So sorry. Uh, regarding the rate of failure uh, and avascular necrosis, but I think we do uh, quite a lot unnecessary surgeries. So uh, we have to, based on the review, we have to select uh, uh, the cases where we have to perform a surgery uh, more precisely. I don't see the point, because if you have a treatment method, which is surgery with a complication rate of 10%, and then you have a conservative treatment method, a closed reduction with a 40% of complication rate, why would you choose that? Even if you do surgeries without probably unnecessary surgeries, but okay. your, your overall complication yes. rate will be the one fourth. Yeah, uh, this is the this is our point now. But uh, maybe in the future we could we could select more precisely the cases where we have to perform a surgery, and we. Uh, but there are still several patients where where we where, where the. Uh, Simple open reduction is enough, and we don't have to do a femoral osteotomy additionally. Just to join this question, uh, I, I didn't catch you exactly. So you see a place for the conservative treatment yes, as course. well? Yeah. For uh, the future? Yes, yes, of course, under the age of uh, four or six months, but not above the age of mm -hmm. six months. Yeah. Yes, of course. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just recall that Last time in the last progressive report, we were talking about your last project, a little bit your own protocol. And then I asked the question, actually, that, that what will you compare to what? Because, I mean, there is always a difficulty that if you just compare to historical data, I mean, that, that could be a problem. So did you advance on this, or what, what is the plan now? Uh, thank you for your question. Our first plan is to complete the systematic review and after that, uh, we have to consider the multicenter study. Mm -hmm.